everybody so today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about foundation and how to get that perfect skin look in your everyday makeup or even when you put lots and lots of makeup because sometimes people think that just layering the makeup is gonna make everything go away but if you're not doing it correctly if you're not taking care of your skin the right way it's just gonna look like layers on top of layers on top of layers of a cake and it's gonna look super thick and it's gonna look super drying on your skin and if, if anything it's gonna bring out the texture or the bumps of your skin even more than it should so i've been recently experiencing some of this stuff myself so i wanted to share my what i've learned with you guys today so first and foremost the makeup does not cover everything makeup does not do it all for you and in some cases it might bring out the worst and it might bring out what you don't like about your skin so if you tend to have a lot of um, breakouts on your skin or blackheads or just texture overall I would recommend that you start taking care of that and implementing a um, a skincare routine start maybe three times a week and then build it up to every day and then you can learn what is it that your skin needs I had a hard time with it myself to begin with because you always hear you have to exfoliate every day you have to tone your skin and hydrate your skin every day but not everybody needs all those three things every day one not everybody needs the same kind of products every day that's two so for me for example I needed to find the right products that work for my skin and I needed to find a routine that worked for me so for example I cannot use moisturizers that are oil based anything that's too thick that just feels like grease on my skin. One, I don't like it. It's too heavy. And two, there's a reason why I don't like it is because it breaks me out. The heavier the product, the easier my pores are gonna get clogged and the easier I'm gonna break out. So I don't tend to break out a lot. I do, you know, when it's that time of the month and you know, stuff like that, but maybe it's like one or two, probably like right here or here. You know, I have one right there. But it's nothing crazy. So when it's out of the ordinary, then I know that it's something wrong. So that's why I was kind of like staying away from moisturizers because I just didn't like the feel on my skin. But now I know why. So I found gel-based or water-based moisturizers that a little bit goes a long way it immediately like sinks into my skin and it doesn't feel like anything so I'm completely in love with that still I don't use it every day so that's as far as moisturizer toner alcohol free is your best friend I pretty much think this is pretty easy for all skin types as long as it's alcohol free it's not drying out your skin even more so if you want to avoid wrinkles you see I still have eyeliner down here sorry <laughs> If you want to avoid wrinkles or if you want to avoid um, drying your skin even more, go for an alcohol-free toner. Now, to exfoliate your skin. I Exfoliating your skin, it's good for you because it takes out like, the dead skin. It gets your skin to be nice and smooth and even. And it's definitely going to help out with the makeup application of your face. The one thing I don't like is exfoliating your face too much dries it out even more. So for me, I tend to do it once a week, twice a week at the most. Sometimes I even do it once every other week, depending on how my skin is. Obviously, your skin is a reflection of what you eat. So the more water you drink, the healthier you eat, the more hydrated your skin is going to be. But obviously, we're not perfect. So... I tend to see and feel what my skin feels like and if it's still pretty soft and you know there's no really a lot of texture there then I'll just do toner and moisturizer but if 
I'm starting to feel, especially around my nose, if I'm starting to feel like little bumps here and there or like my blackheads or like it's just kind of rough around this area, then I'll go and I'll moisturize and do stuff like that. So that's the base. That's something that you have to work on. It's routine. It's not just when you put your makeup on. And that's also when, because I don't like to wear makeup every day. So even when I don't wear makeup, I want my skin to look nice. I want to look awake. I want to look healthy. I don't want to look sick. So, because I have those days when, um, you know, I'm just extra pale. My skin is dry. And I can't afford not to wear makeup because I already know people are going to be like, are you okay? Are, do you feel sick? But it's just that I'm just not taking care of my skin. So you want to make sure that even without makeup, your skin looks good. So that's as far as that. There's a lot more to it, but the stuff that you kind of need to experiment with and, and find out what works for you. Moving on to makeup. Starting with foundation, you have so many options. And just like skincare, it's all trial and error, really, because we have, all of us have different skin types. So you kind of have to see what your skin tells you that it needs. So, for example, me, I tend to get, when I wear makeup, I tend to get oily around here around my nose here and around here obviously you know the famous t-zone so i used to think that i had oily skin and so that's one and two i love the look the matte look on the face so the matte look very you know like on your skin very dry nothing too shiny i love that look Right, so I would think, yeah, a matte foundation, a mattifying foundation would be the best for me. I've been trying, and I tried I tried the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, which is highly recommended. It's a, apparently a really, really good one. I did, I did try this one. I also tried the Maybelline Fit Me foundation. It's right here. And it's the matte poreless foundation. So I tried these two matte foundations. And I like this one. The coverage in this one is a lot stronger. A lot more full coverage than this one. This is not bad. I like both. They're both high rated. They're both very good foundations. But I just don't think that the matte foundation works for me. Because... You don't just put foundation, obviously. You put foundation, and then you put concealer, and then you put the powder, because you gotta set everything. And when I do wear makeup, I wear it for long periods of time, so I need my makeup to last a good amount of hours. So I noticed with the matte foundation that it wasn't giving me what I needed. It was creasing and it was settling into my lines and creasing under my eyes a lot faster than what it should have and it just and just my skin looked really really dry so even with this one for me to be able to work with this one which i can still work with it for like a few hours not a long time i would have to put this put my my entire base and then set my face with the with the setting spray to give a little bit of moisture back in and melt everything to my face then continue with my makeup and then once i i was done still go in with this again and it would still feel like like it was it was just too dry like i couldn't wait to take it off on my face after a couple hours so i didn't like that feeling now the one that i do like and it's become like my go-to foundation lately because of what it does for my skin it's the l'oreal true match and this is the lumi so it, this is luminous it's supposed to give you like shine and it's supposed to um be a little bit more dewy than this one of course you know that's why it's lumi um so in my mind i didn't think i was gonna like it because i don't like shiny face i don't like 
that oily shiny look but I like this because it gives me more room for movement if you understand what I mean the mattifying uh, foundation to me and to my skin it feels like it dries like a mask and it stays so the minute you move the minute I smile you know when I smile and I have this going on and this going on and the minute I do that that's it it already separated here it separated here so if anything it felt like it accentuated my lines even more after a while because it was so dry so but with this one I feel like I have a little bit more room to play with and a little bit more room to, for it to move and and move with my lines you know so I have been really liking this one that's a fact and I can still get the mat the mattifying look with powder so which that's why setting powder is there for you not only it's not only giving it the mattifying look that I want it's also setting the foundation in place for it to last a long time so on top of drying the mattifying foundation even more like it was just a lot you know for my skin at least so with this one I feel like I can work a lot better so that's one number two is primer okay and I'm kind of going like all over the place here depending on what you want from your foundation if you want just coverage of your skin then foundation is good you just have to get like full or medium coverage foundation depending on what you're looking for um so if, if you just want to cover like if I just wanted to cover my freckles or you know any kind of retinas or my dark circles and stuff like that I would just go with foundation but some of us do have pores in certain areas that when you do put foundation it kind of brings it out a little bit more so you want to kind of fill those pores or make them seem like they're not there which they call it sometimes the filter effect or a blur effect or a pore filler even though it's called pore filler it doesn't mean that it's blocking your pores if something is going to block your pores it's going to cause breakouts it's going to cause pimples and a whole lots of things and problems with your skin even though it's pore filler you need to make sure that the ingredients and that's why you always want to go to the reviews because you need to make sure the ingredients and the formula it's not meant to block your pores it's still going to allow them to breathe even though it's filling them in to make to give that look of perfect porcelain skin if you understand what i mean so you have two options you can go either with like a stick with this is a master blur stick by maybelline you can do something like this and just like kind of like rub it in the areas that you need which it works okay it's not my favorite but it works fine because like i said for me i not only need my foundation to stay and not move but i also needed to do that for a long time so i feel like a, a primer that i can put all over my skin and has a little bit of like tackiness to it like it feels a little sticky is gonna help my foundation grab on even more so something like this the nyx studio perfect photo loving primer something like this is better i can put it all over my face i don't feel like i have anything on and it really helps i've noticed it really helps to smooth out the effect on the skin so i really recommend this after that you know you go with your primer you go with your foundation you want to put concealer about the concealer you also have to be careful you want to use a formula that's not too drying because if it is it's just gonna break apart so much easier over here but you still want something that's that gives you a good amount of coverage because the foundation is not going to cover a lot of this going on right here right so you want coverage all over your face and you want double reinforcement here to not only cover the dark circles but to also get rid of that puffiness you know, and those like sunken effect of the eyes just, and it's going to make you look a lot brighter, a whole lot more awake. So concealer is a good one. The Maybelline Fit Me is a really good concealer. The cover effects drops are really good. And I have recently discovered 
well not discovered but i have recently started using the instant age rewind by maybelline as well and this one is really good it's very lightweight and it has a really really good amount of coverage so this one's pretty good now how do you blend everything together you can use either a um, brush like this that has like a flat you know top and just kind of like buff everything in you just need to make sure that you're using a good quality brush so the the bristles don't like stay on your face or the brush sometimes when the hairs on the brush are not good quality you'll see the strokes like you'll see lines on your foundation so you need to be careful of that I, I like a good brush to make to blend in my foundation what everybody likes and what I what I have been liking too it's the beauty blender this is a beauty blender which is a sponge and you you're supposed to you know wet it a little bit dampen it make sure it's not too soaking wet and then you just buff everything in here and then you use the pointy end to buff in your concealer now pros about this there's no stroke lights it blends out everything really really nicely it's a lot faster cons is that because it's a sponge it soaks in some of the product which is a good thing when you put on too much when you put on too much and then you don't know what to do with it this is going to be your best friend but the bad thing about it is that obviously because it's going to soak in product you're going to end up using more and you know if you're conscious about how much you're using then you might not like this there is a and then this the beauty blender itself is kind of pricey it's twenty dollars for a sponge so you know Th this one however this is the eco tool sponge as you see it has like a sharp edge on, on long one on this side shorter one on this side and it really i really like this one it's very nice and soft Dam this is this is dampened already because i was just doing my makeup earlier so um you use the bottom parts to buff your foundation and then you use this to like put your concealer on you can also cut here when you're doing like your contour you know and it really this one is very useful and it's really soft so i if i had to pick i would pick this one and this one is only like i think five or six dollars at the at walgreens so this one for sure i really like it so it's between this or a brush whichever one you prefer last but not least is about the face i do like to set my face so i set my under eye with a setting powder a loose setting powder i've been using the pretty vulgar one lately i'm not sure if you can see it's kind of bright mm. Anyway, I've been using the Pretty Vulgar powder, and this is loose, so I just grab like a brush or even my beauty blender, and I grab, and then I just pack it on here, leave it for a little bit so it can like really bake everything under my eyes. That's one way. The other way is I bought a foundation powder, and that this I use... On the days that i need like a quick makeup fix whatever and i don't have time to put on liquid foundation um i'll use like a powder foundation it's a pressed powder and i just grab a brush a brush i swirl it around and then i just buff everything on my face to set the liquid or the cream stuff that i just put on to make sure that it's going to dry in place and it's going to stick to my face so this is not a must but i find it very helpful at least for me um so that's like an extra step but it's just it helps to, everything to lock in place and to look very very nice and smooth so then after that i do my contour and my contour you know bronzer here right here over here and down here and then once you're done with all the powders bronzer um I tend to do my blush and my highlighter at the end, but if you want to do it before, you can. But once you're done with at least that part, before you move on to your eyes, you want to set everything in place. Depends on your skin. If you have dry skin, then you want to set everything first, do your makeup, whatever, and then set everything after that. 
if you want to wait until the end, you can. And your skin will tell you. If you see it super dry, super matte, you can definitely go in with the spray. It's not going to do you any harm, I promise. And after that, okay. Another tip that I would give you guys, whenever you're doing your lips, okay? First, if you have really, really dry lips and you have like flaky skin on the lip, you you might want to get a lip scrub and just scrub it really well before. Scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. Clean it off or eat it off because most of them are edible anyways. And, and then you'll put your lipstick on top, especially if you're doing like a matte liquid lipstick because matte liquid lipsticks tend, that's what they are, matte, because they tend to really dry everything around your lips to make the lipstick stay and to look matte. So that is a really good, especially if you want it to look good for a good amount of time, make sure that you scrub your lips. You could put even like a lip primer, but I don't feel like that's needed. As long as you have nice, soft lips right before and nothing too dry, then you should be good to go. Um, as far as the eyes, you can prime with the concealer. You don't have to buy an eye primer. You can prime with the concealer. And then what's really important is that you use a transition shade. What I mean by a transition shade is almost like setting your eyelids. So you want to put one color all over that's something neutral. It could be like a light pink. It could be like a beige. It could be... Um, like a decent brown, um, a light color that you want it as your transition shade because it's going to help you blend everything else on top of it so much better. And it's going to take you less time to blend everything together. So you want to put something, especially, and when you see it, you don't want those harsh lines here, like a black line, you know what I mean? Like you want it to blend, like you want, you always want the deep, colors to be like almost here close to like the crease down here you don't want the deep deep color to be all the way up here you know that's not your goal the goal is to be deep and then transition and fade out into the brow bone so for that effect you need to have a transition shade down below on the first layer right there buff it in buff it in buff it in just so you can Everything after that will blend seamlessly and you're not going to have any patchiness, any like blotchy or places where you don't even have eyeshadow. That's not going to happen. It's going to really save you a lot of time and it's going to change your life. I promise you. So that's as far as that. Um, as far as mascara, I don't like waterproof mascara. I really don't. I think it's super hard to take off and honestly when you do take it off you're taking off five lashes at a time with you that's just my opinion i thought i would throw it out there i don't use waterproof mascara i use regular mascara because it's gonna dry anyways and unless you're crying your eyes out <laughs> nobody's gonna notice so um that's my opinion but and even then like it takes a lot for nowadays for the regular mascara to to run like how it used to be for it doesn't really do it like that and then last but not least my last tip for you guys today is a setting spray at the end it's so important because it's gonna lock everything in place and it's not gonna move do you have you ever noticed when you put like a lot of makeup on and then you go say hi to someone and i'm like hey and then your skin touches like their shirt and you see your makeup all over isn't that embarrassing okay <laughs> so for that not to happen to you guys like ever again this is gonna be your best friend um i'm not guaranteeing you that if you do this your makeup is not gonna come off because it will when you rub your face it is gonna come off but when you tap it over somebody you're not gonna leave five pounds of makeup under under clothes i promise you this is gonna make it like almost almost bulletproof and obviously, whichever brand serves you, you can. There's Urban Decay, this is NYX, there's ELF, there's Morphe, there's Tatcha. There's so many brands out there, so you can find whichever brand works for you. But setting spray is a step that you don't want to miss. Especially if you're doing the full face and foundation and powder and all that stuff. 
If you don't, I'm pro I promise you, when you pick up the phone, when you hug someone, it's gonna it, you're gonna leave your makeup there. It, it I'm just I'm just telling you because I do tend to forget and I notice it every single time. That was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want to hear some more stuff about me or if you have any questions about anything i am gonna list the makeup products that i use on my videos so check the description and let me know if you have any idea ideas of makeup videos for me to do i would love to to you know brainstorm with you guys what i can do thank you guys for watching this video and i'll see you guys on my next one bye